I have had the pleasure of serving as the director of an ISAC, that's an Information Sharing Analysis Center. Uh, this ISAC remains embedded within a Department of Homeland Security Operations Center where it shares information with the federal, state, local uh, uh, law enforcement agencies owner-operators, those engaged in the operations of a specific sector, and we do so in a very organic, hands-on fashion. And there are other like ISACs and information sharing conduits that exist that do similar work, and it's a great thing. I think where we're at in our evolution is that, again, I think there's an opportunity to really position the federal government to have a better understanding with regard to how to assign value to that type of information that comes first from the non-professional to the professional that has a foot within both communities and then into the traditional intelligence reports and products that the federal government is used to uh, reviewing. Initially, when ISACs and like bodies were created, uh, there was, in my opinion, this very robust private sector-led initiative to share information. Look, these ISACs typically represent a sector. A sector is a community of interest uh, that represents a part of our community, our greater community. So there's an electric sector, there's a transportation sector, etc. These ISACs have intimate knowledge about those sectors, how they operate, who the players are, how they're vulnerable. They speak the same language so as to avoid translation issues. They are credible, typically, to those owners and operators of those sectors. And that's a, that's a great concept. I think what has happened is the federal government has created a environment where some in the ISAC community feel the need to make the ISAC look and feel federal. So some ISACs have evolved into a entity, a conduit that uses federal terminology, adheres to federal information sharing protocols, uh, adheres to uh, principles and rules best practices that are federally driven. Now this, is, this has to happen. We have to share information responsibly. The danger is that we could lose what makes these private sector driven ISACs and other like bodies valuable to us. See, the intent can't be to create other smaller federal agencies that run on private sector dollars. The intent has to be to keep these ISACs functioning in a flexible, private sector friendly fashion. You know, that's something that the federal government cannot do. The federal government's not built to flex and evolve as rapidly as the private sector can. And so we want to keep those ISACs flexible. So we want those ISACs to have the ability to share information differently, to share information in a way that best reflects the desires, wants, the capabilities of the sectors that they represent. We don't want them to all of a sudden turn into a mirror of the federal government because the federal government, well, they already do that. They already do the federal government. An ISAC may develop information that is contributed by a member of a stakeholder association, uh, a driver, a pilot, someone from the community of interest that they represent. Now, some ISACs may share that information directly with the federal government. Others may share it through a group or a council that consists of subject matter experts, attorneys, lobbyists, uh, a host of others. Now, this is done for the purpose of ensuring that credible information is passed on, but you know what happens when you share information through multiple hands, through multiple agencies, multiple associations. What the net result, I believe, can be that it is diluted or that the
the the initial thrust of contributing impactful information has been diluted by also taking into account real concerns that industry has, liability concerns, competitive advantage com concerns. There is a concern that if you contribute information, someone who may not understand that information may respond with knee-jerk but well-intentioned uh, uh, regulation that will negatively impact that sector, that business, and our economy. So, so the evolution thus far to, re to account for that has been to put a group, sometimes multiple groups or people, in between that person who has develop the information and that agency who needs that information. So I think one of the things we have to take a look at is a better way to create kind of this relationship where you can share freely, where the information is protected, where people can contribute information without fear of being regulated in response to that information. You know, at the state and local level, lo local law enforcement, they develop confidential informants. And they manage those confidential informants often in a very organic way. They tailor their approach based on the relationship, based on the personality of that CI, of that confidential informant. And I'm saying we have to take a long, hard look at ensuring that we don't lose that organic person-to-person agency to agency interaction as opposed to a sanitized, technology-driven uh, federal government to attorney or lobbyist group uh, uh, culture. That's not evolving to the need to share that we spoke of. Now, it's a complex issue. People have business concerns, their legal concerns, their liability concerns. So it's not an easy nut to crack, and many people have tried to do this, and the evolution continues. However, I am, I am confident that there is room to improve. That room to improve involves assigning greater value to information contributed by the non-intelligence professional to include ISACs and other like information sharing conduits and that there is room to prove with regards to improve rather with regards to creating a mechanism a system that allows for the free form sharing necessary to have the impact we need to have when i look at some of our successes and failures in information sharing one thing jumps right out at me. It's glaring that we have a better opportunity to leverage the private sector to a much, much greater degree. Look, part of the 9-11 Commission's suggested actions after the attacks on September 11th was to uh, better engage the private sector. Uh, the Commission spoke to enhanced information sharing systems, spoke to converting our intelligence community driven information sharing efforts from one of a need to know to a need to share culture. That's all 100% correct. I think we need to evolve faster, do so more efficiently, and better engage the private sector. The federal government recognizes the value of information obtained from credible organizations within the private sector. So they have funded ISACs, the FBI has supported an organization called Impregard, it shares information, uh, the FBI Citizens Academy is another group that literally clears people, brings them into the FBI mindset, and now those people contribute to the mission by educating others, sharing information, etc. There are a host of programs like that, Fed, state, and local level. So there's a recognition that there's value out there that you can effectively mine those relationships in a way that makes sense. Where we miss the boat, I believe is when that information comes into an analyst or is put on the desk of a director, it doesn't look like intelligence. It doesn't feel like intelligence. 
uh, it doesn't use the phraseology that is a part of that culture. So you really kind of need to have someone, a group of people, a council of people who are not lobbyists or attorneys, uh, but who understand information sharing, who understand the federal government's intelligence community and its culture, and who understands and has the credibility of the private sector to help translate, to help assign value to those intelligence and information products that are contributed by the private sector, to help explain why that just doesn't look right to the person who is flying that plane or handling that bag or piloting that tugboat that day or driving that, that uh, the truck. And there in lies an opportunity. That's where I think we have an opportunity to really, really enhance what we do.